What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of On the Block, Igor and Joe, November 28th. I just wanted to touch base on some free agent signings. Raptors did lose Surge, but we resigned Fred, which kind of surprised me more than anything, especially after that draft pick that we had that seemed like Fred's replacement. Yeah. Still have Kyle Lowry under contract for one more year. We'll get into that as to, you know, if they, we think we're going to keep him or maybe trade him at the deadline. So we have some guard depth, but we signed Aaron Baines, a two-year deal, uh -huh. which, you know, providing he stays healthy, I think that's a really good pickup. But I'm not really sure, like I said, other than our other front court spots, uh, Boucher came back. Got, got Alex Len. Alex Len to shore yeah. up some depth, but um, yeah. it's it, we still I think need maybe another front court piece, right? Like another power forward, small forward. Well, I mean, you know, based off of what happened in the off season, I think you know, we lost, you know, Rondé. I think I don't know Rondé. Rondé signed, Rondé anybody, signed but, yeah. Um, I mean, you, you can't really say that the Raptors um, got better this off season because they, you know, they, you lost, so you lost Serge, you lost you know, Mark. Mark Mark, at this point, I mean, we were talking about it off camera. I don't know how much Mark's got left in the, in the NBA. I think the Lakers is, is a nice spot for him because there won't be much expectations for him to do much of anything at this point. Um, you know, the offense goes through. You know, it's going to go through LeBron, going to go through AD. Uh, we're about to get to it later in terms of Harold and, and Schroeder. So, again, Mark's going to be a bit player, and I think that, that works out in his favor, so not much there. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, when they did make that draft pick, uh, I was a little bit, uh, you know, this could possibly be it. But, um, you know, you look at the fact that Kyle's the age that he is, uh, so he's not, he's maybe got a couple good years left. It makes sense that, that they get another, uh, another point guard in there. And, you know, my friend, does, Fred does play a lot of, uh, uh, with Two Kyle, one, so yeah. you, you can definitely give him, give him some minutes there. It looked like, you know, they, they, they made some pretty decent draft picks in terms of the draft. Uh, so yeah, I mean, all in all, I mean, losing search sucks. I mean, you know, the move, the move, the Fousey chef, I, did think based off of the earlier comments by Frank when we were talking about it that he would leave, but that's yeah, it was crazy. The mar but the market, like, the market dried up on Frank. That's what I really want to know what the market was. How I many think, offers he had? I think you know, I think a lot of teams were were really um, again maybe maybe the Knicks. You didn't really hear as soon as you know the, the Sacramento signed uh, Fox to that deal. There's there was a lot of places that probably um, were out uh, in terms of I know um, for example uh, Phoenix when they brought in Chris Paul they needed a point guard. That pretty much took away that option there for Fred that they might have been looking at him there. So I think he really had a, a maybe the Raptors and maybe two other solutions and, and the Raptors were, were a better fit. And he decided, you know what, they're going to pay me a reasonably decent amount. He got paid, you know, I think it was a 21, 20 ish. Like, I think that was a reasonably fair deal for what he was producing. It's a lot of money. It still, is, right? It like, is. It's a I lot mean, of money. I mean, at times, I mean, in the playoffs, if you base it off of the playoffs, I, I, I think he had some really bad games. In a lot of scenarios, if you base on how the whole season was going, he was playing at a near all star level at, at times. So it really depends on how you look at the situation. Is he going to get much better from what he is now? Probably not. But like I said, it's not one of those contracts where you're going to be like, well, damn, they, they massively overpaid him. They probably market value. They probably paid market value or maybe gave him a slight overpay, but it's nothing that's going to cripple them um, because he's going to be a serviceable player. So it's not to me like, we mentioned the um, off camera the the whole Hayward situation. I'll take Fred's deal over what Hayward got in Charlotte right. any day of the week. Even though Hayward's been a, an all star multiple times, and Fred Hayward hasn't. has a big injury history too. Absolutely. Right? And again, you look at you know I'm sure we'll get to Clay Thompson and things like that too. You, these guys want to get paid and for a reason too, right? You know, you look what happened to Clay. Clay's gonna probably miss two years. Don't know what he's gonna be. You got you got to get paid because you know you, you saw with Isaiah Thomas, he 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 ended up playing through an injury. He lost probably hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars, and now he's. So now he can't get a chance. Now he's like trying to like for a roster spot. And that's, and that's why you know when Fred when Fred said you know I'm trying to get my money at first I took it as a as a sign that you know what he's gone, but I can see and I mean Fred was getting paid reasonably well in his last contract, but you know you need some some financial security and yeah you know for them maybe you know for us a million you know give me a million dollars I'll go play in the NBA, but for them it's a different story right so. Um, Sucks for the Raptors, but they're gonna need um, they're gonna need OG to step up. They're gonna need your your boy Slim Dunk to, to step up and then as a center. And again, he had spurts last year. Um, I think he needs to you know bulk up a little bit and you know stay out of the stay out of the, the supermarket. I yeah, when, you know, with oh, COVID oh, yeah, that's there, right. Yeah. You gotta make some better decisions, but you know, you know it is what it is. It's definitely a loss. We're definitely a, a worse a team. worse team for sure. But again, yeah. you don't know what they, what the what the, what the rookies were will bring, right? Like. I mean, they did uh, cut Dewan Harris, or sorry, Dewan Hernandez. Hernandez yeah. Um, so that and Malcolm Miller. 
and Malcolm Miller. But again, you got to bring up spots for for the rookies and um, some of those guys that that that, uh, that played um, some of those minutes in, in the bubble were actually pretty good. You might want to give them better roles because you know they, next they, year's the year to try and get yeah. those roles right. Yeah, I think it's uh, and... uh, is able to. Uh, OJ Brissett, I think it was. So guys like OJ that. Brissett, yeah, yeah, he came. But then there was also another point guard they had. Yeah. But so the Raptors ended up signing. So Boucher got two years, 13 and a half. And then um, DeAndre Bembry, who they brought in from the Hawks, yeah. two years, four million. The yeah. second year is a team option. So at the end of the day, they ended up, and then, how much, and then Baines was how much? How much did they get Baines? I want to say it was 10 a year. Which, which is pretty good considering they ended up. I actually thought that Slim Dunk probably got more money than that. I, I think, think he kind of got overpaid, right? That's what I thought. Just based on, like, because, because he he's, a, play he's, re- he's restricted, too. right? So they, yeah, someone would have had Yeah. So he would not have, I'm surprised they kind of gave him that money, but I guess they see a lot of potential in him. And, and again, at, at times, he can he can shoot, he can he can defend. Um, he, he needs a lot, he needs some seasoning, but he's got some potential. And again, a, a guy that was, you know, I think, well, I'm pretty sure he was, like, living on the, the streets or something at one point. Before he was heck of a story, too, yeah. so. You know, good Montreal boy. Um, again, so Baines got two years, fourteen point three. I think he was the only guy that got a so, two-year deal. So he got six, so he got seven, seven point. So he got he barely got anything better than Boucher, which is crazy, which is mind blowing. That is pretty mind blowing because like Baines had a pretty good year. He yeah. Had, yeah, he was at times for the Suns was putting up twenty and ten um, in games. So that's not often, but yeah, no, I, I his really market like, must have really dried up. But that, that's yeah, his age. And apparently, market. he was waiting to sign with the Raptors. Then too. again, if you look, I think what hurt him too is if you look at like Montrez signed for no money. Like Montrez, I think ended up signing uh two years for nineteen million altogether. I believe with the Lakers, he he didn't sign for all that much. He didn't. He, he, they used the mid level on him, I believe. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's that probably threw the market off for Baines quite significantly. But then again, who would you I rather? Thought, I thought Harold. Would you rather have Harold or would you rather have KCP? Would I? I would rather have Harold. I mean, I mean, I think Harold. Um, for you know, after you lose, I mean, Dwight wasn't a, but well, in terms of what they had going, I think Harold. Like in terms of he's the sixth man of the year. Yeah, like, yeah. So you definitely take uh, Harold uh, over KCP because, in my opinion, I mean, what we talked about, you don't know what you're gonna get from KCP, and you know he's a wing player. I think it, those are easier. He's to, had enough of the one and two zero point games too, right? Yeah. But KCP got. I got uh, three years, forty million, which to me is crazy. Well, that was also Marlon. You know, he's represented by uh, like by LeBron, yeah. and, and I think well, you know his he, he got more money in a situation where he probably got again. He had a pretty good uh, finals situation. He was in the playoffs. Yeah, he, was in the playoffs. Yeah, he was terrible. But he, he ended up getting one of those deals where Harold was like, a Tristan took, Thompson took type deal. Or, yeah, yeah. Harold took less, and and then I'm sure Harold's gonna be in two years. He's gonna end up getting paid. And then whatever, because yeah, KCP did get overpaid. Um, Big time. I can't say he didn't, but again, you don't know what the market was for him. Anthony Davis still a free agent uh, too. Like we're pretty certain he's going well, back, yeah. but still a free agent. What are they waiting for, yeah. right? Well, I mean, trading camp starts in a week. I think he's. Uh, I think he's more into what kind of structured deal he wants. Is if he wants to like stay with the two years that LeBron has, things like that. Because I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he decides to go back to, to Chicago. I mean, he is from Chicago. Once, once done, maybe he goes LeBron, back. Once LeBron's done, once LeBron's years, done in, in, a, in a couple of years, that you know things are, are over, and you know he got his chips. Um, I think it was a smart move getting rid of Danny Brickhouse. Oh I'll my god! <laughs> Danny Brickhouse was. They, they moved him quick, and then he got traded right again. They went to Oklahoma City, yeah. and then he went to Philly. Yeah, so he got he got flipped quicker than when he was getting robbed out in Vancouver when he was a Raptor. So um, you know, at the end of the day, like Danny, Danny's had some rough luck the last couple of years. But you know what? Back to back champion though. I, he was a back to back champion. Like, if you look at those situations, like that. So was uh. So who's that? Who's that guy that the Bobcats drafted? The uh, Adam Morrison. He was a. He was a back to back. Yeah, he was in all those Kobe teams that won all those chips. I thought he, 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 had never, won. he never played. I okay. think he at least got two. Okay. But you know, I'll give Danny some more credit than, than that. But like, he at times like he like even when I don't know like I mean we crack jokes that he can barely crack in a layup if he I mean he can hit the threes every once in a while but he can't. Like, his running style, he looks like he's gimped out there. It's, it's crazy. It's very yeah, weird. It's like, crazy. I noticed that last year, the too. Court, yeah. like, even, I think LeBron was getting on, and then they're like, what the heck, you got to get back. He, he can barely run these days. So I think, you know, once they, they got that uh, that shorter deal, and I think that was the end of it for him. We'll see you later. Yeah. And again, I, I personally think the Lakers are, are much better than they were last year based off what they brought in. I mean, they, they, I mean, losing Rondo stings, no doubt, but... At the end of the day, would you, would you take Rondo or you, would you take Schroeder at this point in their career? You probably might take Schroeder. So I want to talk about that. Let's talk Lakers now that we're there. Okay. So the Lakers on paper, everybody thinks that they got a lot better, right? Yeah. And I'm using the word thinks. Okay. Now, we've talked about this in all kinds of sports all the time. Getting the and Philly, who we're going to get to next, okay. Philly, all these names. 
I don't know once you start playing the games how much better Philly got. Sorry, not Philly, the Lakers. Okay. Based off of what? Rondo was incredible for them. I don't think anybody's going to deny that. Schroeder, don't get me wrong. He had great, and we can compare him to Lou Williams. I think that's a pretty mm-hmm. easy comparison. Six man of the year, not the best defense. He'll get you some stats. I'm talking mm-hmm. about Schroeder now. Harrell, there's a reason that the Clippers didn't play him in the playoffs. Defensively, he's not incredible either. Not a good rim protector for the size that he is. Oh, yeah, yeah, Can't shoot ball. outside of the paint. Okay. Right? Now, you look at what the Lakers did in the finals, pretty much LeBron, AD, pick and rolls, pick and pops, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. They used their size. Dwight Howard, JaVale McGee, both those guys are gone. You replaced him with um, Marcus Gasol, which is undoubtedly a downgrade at this point in his career. But but how many but how many minutes did the did, did Howard and, and Howard would start games wouldn't wouldn't play for the rest of it? Yeah, but then McGee would come in. No, I mean if you look at that, towards the end, McGee didn't play much. McGee McGee, I think the last two playoff series, you didn't even see him. Like they were using uh, who were they? They were using they were at, who were they using at center? They were using that. They were using Marcus uh, Marquis Morris. Morris, who they just Marquis Morris. Back they were going small. They would they would. They were using Howard more to do within the Jokic series to get on Jokic's nerves. Because they but in the finals, the in the finals yeah. they barely play them. Well, they didn't have to because Miami's undersized yeah. too, right? So, I mean, I'm sure like in certain situations, they definitely downgraded on size and depending on the matchup. But in terms of overall talent, I mean, in terms of like, let's say... Even defending, like Danny Green, he was, you know, he was not good in the playoffs. We know that. But Danny Green's still like at least an above average defender. Sure. And, I, and again, and who I'm did they him. replace him with? Which is a, which is a good point. They lost Avery Bradley too. Another defender um, who wasn't in the bubble, but still, yeah. I mean, you can say it depending on like, okay, so, you know, Mark. Uh, the one thing that he reasonably could when he was reasonably fit, he was he was a pretty good defender. He yeah. Like on on his lead and things like yeah. that. So you can still use Mark in some of those situations. But now he's he a shooter. 30, six thirty. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So is he a shooter? Can, and like, is he gonna get? Is he gonna get you a massive amount of rebounds? I would say no. No. Um. But again, is he? Is he a, a huge downgrade from JaVale and Dwight? I mean, I don't know if it's that huge because like, I don't know how much those guys were um, were giving out in the first place. But, I mean, overall, I think in terms of content of players, I think, you know, Rondo, I think Rondo's a loss for sure. I don't I don't think Danny's shooting was all over the, the map. They got Wes Matthews, who on paper, Matthews. better guy. You know what I mean? But he also, he was never the same after he tore his Achilles. There's, there's that as well. I, I think Harold's going to be a dog. I think Harold will, will get you 18 and 10. Which is basically all they need from the inside individual. But he's also going to clog up a lot of space for for Anthony Davis inside because he doesn't leave the paint. And I think but, I think one of the, their biggest issues in, in the playoffs that I saw is that they didn't have that that guy that was without without Dwight there. Like they wouldn't. There was no there was no fight on defense in terms of getting boards and things like that. I don't think Harold will, will need to do what he did with the Clippers. I think if he's that dog on the, on on that end in terms of getting boards and, and second chance opportunities, it, it'll work. Um, and again, with LeBron and, and, and AD, I, I don't know, again, I, until I actually see it and how it will fit, you never know, because we saw we the Clippers were going to be fantastic, and then we you know we got way off P and, and all that other stuff going on. And, and now, you know, now we're hearing rumors that Lou Williams is on the trade block because they, they want him out of there. That's a chemistry thing, though, right? And well, that's the same why Harold was going. Well, well we, have, we have that same the situation as that. Is it a chemistry? And I heard Pat Beverly is also on, on the block. Is, is it because of that whole situation? I don't know if he's on the block or they just want to bring him off the bench, which I think he's much better at. Well, the, the, well, the rumor is that at the end of the day, that those three, Harold, uh, Lou Williams, Lou and, and Beverly, were the three that were really ticked off about the rest, the, the rest and, and the whole how, how Kawhi and Paul, and Paul George were being treated. So I think if you have that issue with the with the team culture or whatever, you got to get rid of those guys. So, I mean, Pat Beverly is a, is a serviceable player. Is he, a, is he a good starting point guard for a contender? I would say no. no. Uh, I think he need, uh, as a... a uh, back of point guard, absolutely. He's yeah. got great defense. He can do with it, but I don't think you're going to win with him as a starting point well, guard. Well, the same thing. Like if you were starting Rondo for the Lakers, like Rondo, Rondo was incredible. Playoff yeah, Rondo, he was good. But if you, but if you don't have LeBron, which the oh, Clippers yeah. don't have, and which you know what I mean, then you're then you start asking questions. What's absolutely. our ceiling if he's your starting yeah, point guard? So in guard? terms of in terms of how the team will mesh, you don't know if the Lakers are better. Are they better uh, in terms of talent? I would say yes. yes. I would say yes. But again, we don't know how that Once again, that's what I'm saying. The meshing and all that stuff. Right? We looked at the Clippers this year and we said, oh, hey, Clippers. And, and then obviously, you know, the bubble changed everything. Right? Mm-hmm. I think that if that didn't happen, the Clippers, reports were that the Clippers were unhappy in the bubble. They just wanted to get home. They're yeah. all a bunch of party guys. Lou, Will, Harold, all these guys uh-huh. trying to sneak in girls and all that kind of stuff. Right? Their mind wasn't in it. 
And and shout out to LeBron for and, and the Lakers for actually you know wanting to be there and win the championship. Got to give credit where and credit's due. I think that the one thing that's the difference between the Clippers and the Lakers is you go you go to the Lakers now you have the little set because I'm, I'm under, under the impression that some uh, something happens that Davis will be back. Yeah. Um, you already have the vocal points of what the offense are going to be. It's not a team like the Clippers that from two years ago that was basically giving uh, the, the Warriors a dog fight because they were all hustle all heart. And that was what they were. They brought in these two superstars. It changed the culture of the team, and it sort of imploded. You know, you got Doc Rivers fired. You hear all these rumors that Paul George might be out the door. Um, you know, these kind of situations. While the Lakers is different, you're you're coming into a, a, a situation where you're a role player. You're not taking over a team. I think that causes a bit of a difference. You're pecking you know you know your role. Like I think mean, Harold ends up being uh, the third six option man. or six man yeah. or the third option on offense. I don't know what the future is for Kuzma. I, I originally thought Kuzma a couple of years ago was going to be a player. Um, Matt, he was so bad at times last year. He was un unplayable. Especially um, on defense. On defense, especially. So I don't know how, how much shelf life he has, but I guess they're, you know, they didn't trade him. They're still giving him some life. But Maybe because there's no the market them. value for him too, right? That could possibly be it as well. You know, you might not get much, but um, there's a lot going on. And, you know, the, there's rumors that of the Clippers going after Terry, Terry Rozier now that they drafted LaMelo. Um, I don't know who, who they give up on that. Well, probably know. Beverly, right? Matching salaries, because Rozier makes a lot of money, right? And they already have a lot. Rozier's probably around like 14 or 15. I think Pat Bev's around 11. He resigned for something like that. I think Rozier made more than that when he was a free agent out of Boston. I think he, he might be like a three-year 50 something. I thought, I thought he was almost at Fred money. I think, nine, I think 19, if I had right, something like that. I think he was at 18, 19. I have to double check. But um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's in a position where they, they believe that. I mean, I heard Jordan loves him. But at the Three end of year, fifty six. So he's getting uh, under twenty, about eighteen a year, something like that. Eighteen, nineteen a year. So and you look at that situation. They in their salaries now. You know, signing a buck and so forth. They, they don't have a ton of cap space. They lost. You know, Julius Ostrom, um, Michael Green. Green. Um, so they and they lost. They, they brought back Pat Patterson trade. for what reason? Nobody knows. Really you know, maybe he likes, he likes to party. You know, but he comes. He comes with Paul they, they trade Shaman. I did like the. I, did you like that deal? I, I like the Luke Kennard thing because he, he was actually pretty he reasonably was good, good when the, he was playing. Yeah. He was injured. Yeah, well, Luke Kennard for the business when he was actually playing was. And he can handle good. the ball. Yeah, so like they, they definitely got something there. Uh, do I think overall they they're they're better? No, my personal opinion, they're not they're not a better team than they were they were because. See, but once again, on, that's on paper. On paper. Do you think the chemistry got better and the team got better due to chemistry? I think the chemistry probably got a little bit better because uh, because New coach, Kawhi, Kawhi and Tyrone Lewis in there and Ibaka are, are yeah. buddies. Uh, you know what? You know what's that whole uh, what did you do, baby? Like, what did you do, baby? What did you do, baby? <laughs> and all that other stuff. And they're boys. They'll they'll get along. I don't, I don't think I don't think Serge is a problem in, in any. No, he definitely helped a lot. Except if he you know if he puts makes Kawhi too many kinda, scarves. No, they, that whole uh, cow testicles. Yeah, yeah, that ox, <laughs> that, that that penis of the ox, oh right? That, that on was the pizza. That, on the pizza, yeah. See if he does anything like How that, hungry then, are you? then it's a problem. Um, but again, shout out to the Mafuzi chef. He, he was a, definitely a character. He will be missed. Yeah, um, I think I think Aaron Baines will uh, will end up being a, a, a lovable character. You can already tell sure, that. Yeah. I've liked Baines for a long time. And so again, I'm I'm looking forward to what the rookies can bring. I uh, I liked what I saw from again limited uh, from from the rookie that they drafted in the first round. So his name is escaping me for some odd reason. Uh, so me too. Yeah, the, the rookie's escaping me. But uh, all all in all, like I said, he looked like it was a it was a steal of a draft pick, and, and he'll provide something there. So some more more backcourt depth. Flynn. Um, Makai, Makai Flynn. Yeah, Malachi. Malachi Flynn. Um, again, I think he, he was also... He looked, uh, he was, looked like he, a Fred kind of clone. He did. His he, game. He, he, kinda, he reminded me, well, in terms of looks, he kind of reminded me of um, the, guy that, the guy that was on the, uh, the Cavaliers. He kind of looked like, a little bit like Don, Delonte West a little bit. Oh, a little bit. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know he's, he's, um, he's the only person that has a female agent. Did you, did you know that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. He saw that. That was, yeah, that was yeah. pretty interesting. She's, she actually, like, yeah, the first time a female agent has a, has a client in there, that's pretty cool. Um, but again, like, shout out to him. He looks like he plays a lot of defense. Can do he won defensive player of the yeah. year. I mean, the conference isn't the greatest. The Still, a so. six a guy that's six feet, yeah. six foot one, so, one defensive mean, player of the year. And the Raptors culture and things. And um, I, I think the, 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 the guy that they drafted in the second round was also a, a pretty good get from, from what yeah, I saw. Yeah, they went to Nevada. He was yeah. he scored a lot. For scored them. a lot. Of shoot, he's a shooter. So again, like if, if they can find another like Norm Powell and like late night stuff with like I mean the Raptors have drafted reasonably well when you know I mean Dewan didn't end up being much, but. You know, it was as a late pick, anyways. But he was you look at Delon, you know, they look at um, uh, Delon Wright. You look at other these guys. These guys have been serviceable NBA players. They uh, they haven't really picked a lot of busts, um, well, except for uh, our boy. Um, 
Well, I mean, we, we call we, we call him our boy, but the um, the guy that went to Memphis with uh, with Valanciunas, uh, the Brazilian kid, oh man, oh, amazing. Oh, Cabo 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 he just resigned Cabo. In, with the Rockets. And I see he's still having a serviceable career. He's getting a career, getting the paycheck still, yeah, right? And he's making he was scoring some points here yeah. and there. And so I know the Raptors haven't done that bad for themselves. They they're bringing in some serviceable players, but overall, you know, there was you know the Chris Paul trade to you know even the Phoenix was a, will be an interesting situation. Uh, that, that makes them a, a playoff, playoff team if he's oh, healthy, he's right? Healthy, sure. That's the thing. You I mean, they, I mean they, like, they were lucky not to make not to make the playoffs in the bubble, considering they they went undefeated. Booker looks like he's definitely going to help the culture there too. Oh, right? 100%. You know, because they've always needed a guy. Like you know, you got you got uh, Aiden. Um, I think they, 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 the Uber trade probably makes them a little bit um, yeah. worse. Um, that part that helps the the Warriors, but I don't. A lot of loss of clay. Uh, I don't see them doing much, to be honest. I think if, 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 Curry, if Curry's healthy, that's another question because last year you missed you two separate injuries. Yeah. If Curry's healthy, I still think they get in the playoffs. Really? Yeah. I don't know about that. that that's, that's a really really at, yeah. Because if you look at like all the teams that like if you look at okay, teams so let's, that are improving, like let's say like you like the so the West playoff teams last year: so Lakers, Clippers, so Portland. So Portland, so Portland was the eighth seed. You think they're better than Portland? As no, but OKC okay, is not in this year. Well, yeah, okay. So, so one spot playoffs. opens up, and let's look at the non-playoff teams from last year. Golden State, Minnesota's not making it, Sacramento's not making it, the Spurs are not making it, and Memphis is not. So that leaves us with the Suns, the Pelicans, and the Warriors, right? Okay. And you have to think maybe one yeah. team here doesn't. Houston yeah. also, who Sacramento's, knows what's going to happen with Houston? Uh, yeah, Sacramento's got, got some stuff. But, well, I mean, they really? lost, lost Bogdanovich. I mean, they didn't, I mean, Fox is recently. Fox is, is, I don't know, I don't really think uh, I don't think they're a playoff team. They signed Hassan Whiteside to a one-year deal, too, right? But so I don't OKC, know. So, so to me, I think that OKC is, OKC is out. Okay. And I, Houston, they're probably a playoff team, but they also, yeah. Harden and stuff, they definitely. They should be if they're healthy, right? But yeah, then again, so, like Portland, who knows? Portland should be a playoff team. But every I mean, year we look at a team, like we I mean, didn't expect injuries there again with Golden State. The Pelicans, people thought was on the bubble. Minnesota, I mean, you think I mean, is not. Minnesota might, might do some things with, with Edwards and then Russell and uh, Towns. They, they got some talent. No out. defending, too. I still think they're a few years away. The Pelicans, Pelicans, you make a case for. They got Pelicans, Steven Adams, too, yeah, right? The Pelicans, you can make a case for them. If Zion stays healthy. Yeah. I mean, they lost Holiday, they lost Holiday and, and so forth. So now that's a, that's a, that stings, but. Overall, they, they, I mean, so, okay, so you got Steph, you got, you know, Wiseman, you don't know what you're going to get out of the kid. Well, Wiseman was a potential number one. Like, he yeah. was probably going to so be number one. Yeah. He's going to so be good. They need rim protection. Yeah, they need rim protection. Then, you, then you're relying on a, a bounce back year from Draymond. And I just think Draymond's good if there's guys around like a play And then you got Wiggins, yeah, and, Wiggins, and, Wiggins and Oubre. Okay, both those guys are 18. Like, they're going to have no problem scoring. Yeah, okay, but that was a They so might, if, if, like I said, if Curry's right. healthy, if Curry's healthy, uh, you don't think so? I don't know. Okay, well, so Draymond. Wiseman, Wiseman is a good rim protector. Like he's good on defense, so you know that's good. You know Draymond's an you know all first team defense. Yeah. Who raise average, and then everybody else nothing, there. right? But all all you need is a few guys there. I don't so, know. so you so you'll have a bit at even with Clay out of there. Right? With Clay, I thought they would actually with be Clay a they're a lock. Yeah, with a lock. Clay they're a lock. But well, top four pick. I don't it'll really depend on how how what the kid does and how Uber meshes in there and how Wiggins meshes in with Curry. I don't know. A lot of like. I don't see it how, again, with Clay out, again, Russell had some reasonable successes, and I would assume that, that Wiggins would as well, but they, they should make, I don't know. I think Curry played like eight games last season. Like, That's why it's So you have them judge. being better than feet. On paper, it'd be tough. If, if you got, you got, I think Aiden will improve. I think Paul, I think Booker, it's it's a tough situation there. I think I think they'd be, you know, again, depending on how. Like, you, depending at on the end how, of the day, Steph Curry is obviously a Hall of Famer. He's uh-huh. gonna be an MVP candidate again if he's healthy. If he's healthy, you know sure. he's gonna score twenty eight points sure. a game. Sure. So anytime you have an MVP guy there, you know your team's at least in the playoff picture. Sure. Like I said, this is all assuming all these guys stay Should healthy. Be, man. I don't. I, I don't want to start saying what team. I mean, like I said, like, OKC okay, is definitely not. OKC oh, probably gonna be finishing the bottom of the league. Last, yeah. uh, they, they pretty much dropped everybody but Shea, but uh, but Shea Gilders Alexander. So, I mean, they they're going for they got like. 25 draft picks in the next three years. It's yeah, crazy. Just, I don't know what they're doing with all these 18. Well, I mean, I would, I, would as, I would assume that they're, they're eventually going to shop all these picks to get to get guys, right? They, you know, they'll, re, they'll, they'll put in the team. Maybe put in a full swaps, type offer or something, right? And stuff. Well, I mean, again, like I said, really, like they potentially could move all those picks to get, to get better players, obviously, right? I wouldn't make all those selections. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But, yeah, I really, I mean, you never know who you, depending on the draft, like there, there's going to be some draft capital there. So let's get to Houston. Houston uh, lost Anthony, obviously, as their coach. Um, so they got Harden, Eric Gordon, who's still there. That's hurt all the time. 
Westbrook. Westbrook. Yeah. You think Westbrook stays the whole season? Is there any takers for him? I mean, with that contract. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I didn't think there would be a lot of takers for for Chris Paul's contract, right? And he was able to get Chris shipped Paul, off. Yeah. But it, at least well, Chris Westbrook can still play at a high level. I mean, if you if you want me to like. I would have said that, like, you know, Jordan and Charlotte might have gone in on Westbrook, but now yeah. LaMelo, that's right. probably not going to happen. And by the way, I, I, we're going to just probably discuss that at some point. The 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 brilliance that it ends up being Le, uh, LeVar with Michael and Charlotte with, with, with his prime Poetic story. justice. Poetic justice. <laughs> Uh, all that, you know, I, I and again, I'm... Imagine they had their best been, friends now. I've never been the number one Michael Jordan defender on this podcast because I'd probably be number three out of anybody yeah. here. But there's there's no way. I think Michael would have beat him blindfolded. And I mean, that's just oh, honest. Of course. Like, Michael, yeah. there, there was that, was that like, his discussions is, you know, my kid's going to be better than Steph. I'll give him credit. You know, credit, credit. Two kids two drafted. Kid, second two kids drafted in a second situation. Third, yeah. Um, do I do I believe that at the end of the day he tries to take a lot of the publicity from his sons? Absolutely, and I don't like it. I I, I don't like. The, he has taken it down a notch. He has so. because he's again he's he's no longer in in the prime markets of L.A. and and he and his kids probably told him, "Hey, Dad, you got to back off." Um, and again, he's done great things for his kids. And, you know, I'll give him full credit, but he he definitely. Is one of those type of dads that he, he made uh, the practice rosters on the NFL team didn't didn't amount to much and he's living vicariously through his kids mm-hmm. and that and that's just the reality of it. Um, but I would love to see that first meeting between him and I, I would love that's to see Tom yeah, yeah. uh, and just be a situation where he Michael I, I, with his you know fifty year old pop belly just ch- tells him to get in the court and just takes him to school because I still think he would even like what's the quote from the last dance where he says when when before he. That motivated me, or something like that. Yeah, like, said, what's his quote? I mean, well, how about the Michael before he goes. About, well, pretty much, he's like he's like, and then someone challenged me. Yeah, well, I, well, I think that this that's that now. Like, there's rumors that Michael would uh, would actually tell that to the media, but a lot of that was made up. Like, he would he would pick out some scrub on one of the other teams and be like, "Yo, this guy talked." Uh, talk down to me. He said he was a better player than me. Yeah, yeah. And, and going, a lot of yeah, that yeah. stuff, like no one thinks that actually happened, but he used that as personal motivation to take guys down. And I would love just to see, even if it was a charity situation, of him taking on LeVar one-on-one. And I, if LeVar could even manage even a point or two, I'd be, I'd be surprised. In a sense, that I, can, I don't know what kind of shape Michael's in. He is 50 years old after all. But, man, there's no chance. And, like, that, that, that's, that's one of those arguments that, you know, like, for guys like, guys like Skip, for example, the two-point players in the NBA talking trash to NBA players. That doesn't make, make a lot of sense to me, but... That's what the line is. I just found it. What is that? Is that what the line so, was? No, no, the line is... What he's, okay, so in this example, he says Clyde was a threat. I'm not saying he wasn't a threat, but being compared to him, I took offense to yeah, that. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, and, and that's like... And, the yeah, Clyde and I took that. offense to that. He was, a, very yeah, he was on the dream team. He was on the dream yeah, team. He was, was a very good player. But I took offense to that. Because they were comparing him in, in that series. And then again, that can get us all the ball, you know... The finals matchups and then that we're not going to get on a whole no, other no. show. Be Clifford Robinson as a second man, like uh, Terry Porter. Like no, no, come on. Terry Porter's the G. Okay, let's go. Let's go Rockets. So Rockets, um, like we were just talking about, still have Harden, still have Westbrook. They bring in Christian Wood from Detroit, who looked really good last year. Yeah, I, I didn't understand the the trading of, of Covington. I thought he did a great job. I, I didn't get it. I don't. I don't know. I guess they were giving. They got a good back round. their first round pick for him. But like, I, I thought he, he played. He played well. I, that, that was a, to me. Why? That was a sign of throwing in the the white flag. You think so? I think with I, that it was more so like D'Antoni was gone. They got no um, size. The, the GM was gone oh, too. Good. And the whole thing with that with both those guys is they were all in on the small ball. Now the GM and the coach are out, and now they're going to go more traditional. Huh. You bring in Wood, who's a power forward, and Cousins, who's hungry now after not playing for two years. So you go with the traditional lineup now. But but how but how much is how much is Cousins going to have left with all those leg injuries? I don't know. What do you think? Not much. Like if you're banking on Cousins being, your you don't think you're getting fifty? Your starting center. I I don't know what like with all his injuries. I don't know like it, it's same thing with Clay, and I'm you know knock on wood. I'm hoping that it's like true. Clay could simply be and is, is again Derrick Rose has recovered reasonably, but Clay may never be the same player he was. It's worse with guards, I feel, when you because Achilles, I think, is like the, the worst the, ligament the, injury to have. The one thing that Clay has that a lot of these guys like is Shoot. that he's, he's an exceptional shooter, so he'll he'll make a niche in the NBA because he's a phenomenal shooter. But will he be able to be that lockdown defender that he was and and be what he was at that level? Time will tell, but yeah. even Cousins, like big guys, like he he wasn't very mobile to that's, begin with. That's why I'm not really concerned, though, right? I'm more right concerned that, worse. No, but like if you're a guy like Westbrook or like Rowe, if you're like a really athletic guy, Kobe, that's what really, yeah. that's what forced Kobe yeah. to retirement. Yeah. He would have still played a few yeah. years. He tore his Achilles. Yeah. But 
rest in peace, obviously. Yeah. But um, that's the thing. Like, I feel like with those kind of injuries, the bigger you are, it's not as much of a difference maker because it's not like Cousins is going to cross you over and dunk on you anyways. He's a power guy. He's you know most of his defending is body on body. It's strength. I mean, it makes him a little bit more of a liability on defense, even though he wasn't great, great to begin with. But I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll see how. Again, we never know how guys are going to come back. I didn't think the small ball was going to work at, at all, anyways, because they were they were they, at times they would get out rebounded like ridiculous. Crazy, and against well. the Lakers, that's what really and did it. Yeah, in. when you're when you're able to to, get, to shoot the three at at a, at a high clip, maybe maybe you can like get yeah, out throw, but. I mean, at times they were they were rough on, on all over the place, but uh, I mean there were the, those rumors about the the James Harden thing to Brooklyn. I what I was hoping that, that that wouldn't work. That no, would do you think that that would do you think that Harden wanted out first of all? Do you think that the teams had contact? Uh, do I believe that that Harden uh, kind of sees that that, that, that he's, not gonna, that he's not going to win a championship the way that the Rockets are going? Absolutely. Um, do I think that the Harden situation with KD and and, and Kyrie would work out? Absolutely not. You have you have three ball dominant guys. Um, I think KD would be would have been all right with it. I think Kyrie would have been as as was reported. Kyrie would never have gone for it because that that system won't work. You you have guys that need the ball in their hands. Um, that would have been that would have blown up by by mid season. Uh, it would and have that's been great. Providing it would have been great those two guys theater. stay healthy. Right? Yeah, it would be great. Yeah. Like he like that's, great that's interviews. A, that's a must watch. Like that would be a must watch team because that would be a good hard knocks if they had that. It'd be right? absolutely entertaining because you know because you got three maybe the, the top scorers in the league and. Um, and so forth, but I also don't know. I think you know, Harden is another guy that wants to be the big dog. That's um, the thing. I feel like if Harden um, said I want to go to the Nets, he's a conceded that he's not going to win with this team. Uh-huh. Second of all, conceded that he's not the best player on a title team because that would have to be Durant. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. That's just a sign of like throwing up the white flag. Like let me kind of you know piggyback off someone and get another ring, which has been done multiple times. Oh well, yeah, and I, and I would say that you can you know you can make the case that like like you know with Steph Curry coming off of MVPs, that, that Durant did that for uh, for a good portion, depending on all your thoughts. Now, most people will probably take Durant over Curry in, in most situations, but at the end of the day, like Curry was coming off some MVP type level seasons, so we, and and we all knew that Durant didn't feel comfortable in Golden State because it wasn't it was never going to be his team. So, uh, can you be the big dog on the team if it's never your team? I would argue not. Um, in in those circumstances, so I don't, I don't think Harden would have worked out there. I think Harden need this Harden need a change of scenery. Is it? Is it? I think he. Took offense to well, I think a couple of things that the uh, the old Rockets owner was saying at, at some times, but I don't see like the way that they they're right now, they're not going to win that Western Conference. Um, I think when they when they finish fourth or fifth last year, I for would four. they they probably bought them bought them out now to uh, probably sixth place. I would I would I would say one game really was so, uh, the Dallas had forty three wins. They Dallas, had forty four. Yeah, Dallas will, four Dallas will be, Dallas with everyone healthy will, will probably be better. Powell was probably opinion. coming back. And I, I would probably say that if if, uh, if Portland has a has a whole year of Nurkic, they probably will be better too. Uh, and, and they get what they get from Dame and, and CJ. So you think there's a chance Houston doesn't make the playoffs? No, I don't think there's a chance there because I think Harden's too much too good of a scorer. And he'll, he'll he'll take over with too many games for them to have that kind of record. They would have to, they would have to him have to like he'd have to be one of those situations where he get Someone injured gets significantly, uh, and he hard and were to miss like thirty games or, or you know tore tear something up. But he's such a dominant um, offensive player that I can't really see that he's he's built to be a regular season scorer in the playoffs when That's he when he gets a little tougher it's a little different situation. But in the regular season, and I want to talk about that too. So I think that the, even the reason why a lot of you don't see too many free agents really signing their big guys. I know that with it because he got paid and that more so maybe was, like the market and I don't that know, kind that of stuff. That was a weird too. Uh, weird situation. I figured like he did some things for Detroit that I didn't understand. Okay, that. so we can talk about that too. So Jeremy Grant gets two years, sixty three years, sixty million, which a lot of people were surprised that I'd rather have Wood. I've never been a Jeremy Grant. Like I don't think he's incredible. He's like he's, he's overachieved in his career. He's sure. good. And he's not worth twenty million dollars. So Detroit essentially, unless Wood says, "Hey, I'm out. I'm packing. I'm out." I thought that, I thought Detroit was trying to get Casey fired from the stuff that they did. In my honest opinion, really, well, they gave him like a five year, six year deal, so he's not really going anywhere. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like I have no idea. They brought him the line, right? I thought Wood was one of their one of the core guys. Sh- core guys. They're one of their shining young guys. It didn't make any sense to to not qualify the guy. So. Then I don't know what they were doing. I guess I they really what, like what, else did, what else did they, who, who were they throwing money at? Nothing. So they, they ended up getting rid of Canard too. Yeah, right? which is another. Blade Griffin, you know, supposed to be coming back. He's always hurt. They always say he's in the best shape. Um, and then DeLon Wright, I guess, is starting at point guard for them, right? Which is, which is, and I, that's I, Raptors. I love, Raptors I love, back, I love right? DeLon, but like, if, you, if he's starting a point guard for you, you're in a lot of trouble. He's a, he's a serviceable, like, seventh, eighth man off the bench, but you're not, you know. I don't know, as a starting point guard for an NBA team, I'm you know, 
shout out to him and maybe maybe he needs the opportunity and then he shows something but I can't, I can't well, they drafted that. actually Killian Hayes, that the the, uh, the, awesome. the French American awesome. guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome, so they took him. Where did he go? I think it was like sixth or seventh overall. So I guess he'll start at point guard, right. and then Delon can play the two. With uh, him. My like, favorite was the Knicks taking uh, taking another like it was another power forward, but it was about like twelve yeah. power forwards yeah, yeah, on the yeah, team. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I think that that's one of the few picks that they'll actually get. That you know, you he is, is what he is. is. This is a dunker. Not even that. Like you know that he's going to bring that. He's he's almost like a Harold, a more athletic Harold and a bigger Harold. I mean, he looks like he's gonna bring some, you know, some, some, some race some buds on him. Boy, oh, yeah, a weird ass, a weird, a weird name. Um, all in all, he'll, he'll, he'll put some buds in the seats. I mean, he, he looks like he's a, a no guy seats that, this year, but yeah, no seats this year. But he'll, he'll like he'll be a guy that you'll, you know, big, dunks. big dunker. He'll, he'll light up the stage, but you know, we'll see what, what he does. He was a guy that I don't think was that highly highly touted at the beginning of the year, but he didn't have many scholarships. Raised, uh, raised up his levels by what, what he did. Again, I, I didn't particularly think that the, like this year's draft class was all that great, but I mean, you got you got a guy that went first overall that said he'd rather be in the NFL. So I mean, that pretty much tells you madness, that, madness that, this year. That, that that to me was an absolute like that turns into a bust of a pick. Like that there was just writing on the wall all over the place. A guy, I mean, I don't, I don't know what goes through a person's head. You're you you know where you're supposed to be drafted, even if you even if you have these somewhat beliefs or whatever, you don't say that. Out loud, in front, out loud in front of a microphone when you're when you're because that literally maybe if he was some kind of a different talent he could have completely tanked his, his drafts if teams got the thinking that this guy you know he's he's already showing us that this guy's not going to put in the work to, to become anything and this is minnesota who drafted wiggins and drafted towns two guys with questionable work ethic first overall yeah, as it is exactly so that goes into a point where like this guy would rather be in the nfl he's gonna he, well he's gonna be another anthony bennett or another Kawhi uh Kwame brown like it's a, like to me, maybe it works up to that. Maybe the kid, but you just don't. And I have that. Even if I was his agent, like shut the hell up. Like what are you doing? It's crazy because I've noticed what, and we can talk about. Um, that, that reminds me of the NFL guy that, that that started blazing up on social media before the draft with the and, mask, right? With the mask, yeah, and, yeah, and it exactly. tanked it. And it yeah. tanked his freaking. Uh, I think it tanked his draft. So I thought was the guy that the Texans just traded for. It was. It was. Yeah. Larry, I think it was Larry Tunsil. Larry, Larry Tunsil. Yeah. yeah, it was Larry Tunsil. And they, I and they, that almost. They've been here before. Yeah. yeah it was, um. <laughs> What was I gonna say? Oh, um, I think we're on we're on Detroit before I went on that. Oh no! What I was gonna say is Terrence Davis. What I've noticed with NFL, so NFL players are their own beasts in terms of sort of stupidity, doing things like uh, physical abuse, verbal thing. abuse, whether it be children, wife, other guys, DUIs. You don't see that too much in the NBA. What I've noticed, this is just whatever. Is most of these guys are football players for the most part, which uh, Anthony Edwards was a football player. Yeah. And for whatever reason, from the south in the states, like Edwards is from Georgia, Davis is from Mississippi, like all these guys, I feel like in the southern states, they're football guys, and they don't make the best decisions. Random thought, but that's just but what I, I mean, picked if up. You, if, you like, you it, if you look at it, I mean, he even if let's say he did it, he it was a, like he didn't know he wanted to be uh, yeah, Anthony Edwards. He wanted to be in the NFL. The the writings on the wall that I from people I used to speak to or or his agent or whatever. That they'd be like, well, you're gonna be a number one pick, pick uh, there, number one pick, or number or one you might end up being like a fourth or fifth rounder with no guaranteed money. Well, what do you do? So I mean, we had a situation with uh, with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was a high draft pick in baseball, and he chose to go play football. Um, the um, the are the Cardinals guy. Um, and I'm spacing the court. The Cardinals could be um, Kyler? Kyler Kyler Murray, another high draft pick in, in the MLB. Um, again. Drew, Drew. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, we were just going to get into who we thought were the best playoff performance guys that you would have to lead your team in the playoffs. I brought up Jimmy Butler, so we're going to have to go through this oh, a you know little what? bit. You know what I'm bringing up, that's for sure. Who we bring it up? Huh? Who we bring it up? Well, the playoff performers? On, on, in the uh, East, oh, before the we East. get to the West. Okay, in the okay, East. okay. Okay, save yourself for that one. In the East. In the West, there's, 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 there's no doubts. There's no, there's there's no doubts. So we went through the we went through the teams. Uh, we brought up the Raptors, who don't have that guy. And we've seen we don't want to name names, but the Raptors don't have that guy since Kawhi left. And that was when I started getting into the Raptors guys and their roles, whether it be Fred, OG, mm -hmm. Pascal. Unfortunately, we have to bring to this table. If you had a guy like not even Kawhi, but even if you had Jimmy Butler on the Raptors, they might be a favorite. Okay, well, okay, but so, so and I wanted to bring up that point because when you mentioned it, and I I said the same thing, you know, with that. The Raptors obviously wouldn't have done what they did without Kawhi there because Kawhi at times was absolutely phenomenal. But, and then there's a big but, 
you look at what happened in the Clippers, and, and I kind of and I kind of rethink that maybe I, I wasn't giving a lot of these other guys enough credit because if you look at it, I mean, at, a, at another star player, we can say that that Paul George technically would have been better than anyone of the Raptors had. I think you can probably make that case. You have other guys like like Lou and, and Beverly and, and Montrez and. It managed. It absolutely collapsed. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to spend. Right? Yeah, but this gets back to what we started the show with when I said, did the Lakers get better because they have more star power? And I think that that's an emphatic no. Okay. And you and a lot of people would disagree. We can go through the guys. Harold needs the ball. Okay. Lou Williams needs the ball. Lou Williams, he's a great scorer. I don't think you can tell Lou Williams sit in the corner and shoot threes the same way you can tell Danny Green to, or okay. tell Fred Van Lee to. Okay. And I think that's why the Raptors were so good and a great fit for Kawhi. Is the talent better when you compare last year's Clippers to the Raptors two years ago? You could argue that the Clippers had a better roster, mm -hmm. right? And most people probably would. Mm -hmm. But the Raptors had OG, who's a great defender. But, he, but he, he wasn't really there for a lot of that year. He wasn't before, there for the playoff run. Yeah. No, but he was there for the season. Right. Fred, who just got paid, we know what Fred is. And I talked about that with Fred. Is Fred a guy that if you're going into a playoff series, you could argue that Fred's the Raptors' best player at this point in everybody's career. Well, so the Raptors, the Raptors, Raptors right now. Right like now. So uh, it's, you, you it's, it's Kyle, Pascal, and Fred. Okay, yeah, yeah. And to be honest, Fred shooting percentage wise and all that kind of stuff. You know, you know, Fred is the best one. Huh? Wow. I'm just saying. I think you can make the argument. Interesting. Could well, you not make the argument? I mean, I mean, I, I can't really. Uh, I don't want to. It's a debate, is what I'm Kyle, saying. Kyle, I mean, Kyle's had a good career. I mean, he, they say he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't know about all that, but I mean, Kyle's probably. And I mean. Until Fred makes the the All Star team, I don't know if we can say that he's been better than Pascal. Because Pascal made like a Tatum didn't make an All Star team until this year, but you would have said that Tatum's a better yeah. player than someone else. Fair enough. Okay, so okay. you're going to be have too much time. What I wanted to say about the Clippers and the Raptors, the Raptors were a better fit because they have guys that know their roles and everything. Whereas yeah. with the Clippers, whole thing was they went like you said, they went to against the Warriors. Everybody had this thing. They all had their roles being from usage rates super high to usage rates dropping with Paul George and Ka and Kawhi. Yeah. So all of a sudden you're having to adjust your game. Right? Whereas with the Raptors, OG, Pascal, Fred, Kyle, Siakam, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, um, Serge, all those guys were second, third, fourth, fifth options. Nobody there is being like, yeah, swapped, I need the ball. You swapped, the out, you swapped out the Rosen for Kawhi. Yeah, where's what I'm saying, basically yeah, yeah, where I'm saying with the Clippers, yeah. everybody's like, I need the ball to do stuff. Which makes sense. Danny Green also, who we talked about. That's where I think the difference is. Right. And I want to kind of just... That's fair. That's fair. And, and, that, and, that, and a lot of people don't think that. Same thing with the Lakers. Like, oh, I mean, oh makes, the Lakers got a lot better. Yeah, Schroeder yeah. needs the ball in his hands all the time. LeBron controls the game. Rondo was able to alleviate some of that pressure from LeBron of having to dribble the ball. Now you're bringing in all these guys. Yeah, but you're, you're bringing, like, for example, let's like, say a guy like Schroeder. Like, Schroeder's going to, I can see the Schroeder's not, might not start for the Lakers. He, he can probably have the same role. Whatever, same yeah. role. I mean, that, that's just a guy that's gonna, that can score. That'll, that'll win the Bronx on the bench. That can just create. He'll be, he'll be what Rondo pretty much was this year, where he'll have to be another primary ball handler. That, that'll um, LeBron, when LeBron's taking his, his 50 minutes of rest a game. And he'll be out there. You feel safe with him yeah. all the time. That's basically what's going to be. And, and again, you can argue that if he doesn't get as injured as Rondo, I mean, it might be a, again, he won't be the creator that Rondo was, but he's probably a better shooter. But Rondo was hitting some shots. At the he playoffs. did. In the playoffs. Very, very impressive. We don't have much time. I want to get back to uh, what we were saying about the Raptors. Um, oh, well, sorry, Jimmy Butler. Just to fine. finish off that. Yeah. How many guys would you pick over Jimmy Butler when you're going into a series? Same way the Raptors went against Boston. They ended up losing in seven. Whereas, you know, Tatum... Undoubtedly, like superstar, kind of whatever, borderline yeah. superstar. The guy's going to get his 30 points, whereas the Raptors, we saw guys kind of falter. So we talked about Giannis just going through the teams. There was Giannis, okay. there, there were other guys. But, Who okay, would you so, take? So, and, and I am, I'm going to preface this because, again, we, we obviously we, we like to live in the moment, but I mean, Jimmy absolutely had an incredible run in the, in the bubble. Um, but even against the Raptors in that series two years ago against Kawhi, he was their best I mean, player. I mean, but when if, Embiid and Simmons did nothing. I mean, into, in that, I mean fair enough. Then with that, and they have done nothing and in the playoffs. Again, and based off of talent, if you look at it like the way it was, that Sixers team was probably more talented than the Raptors. They were. They were. They, I mean, but you once got, you again, had, cohesiveness was not there. was not there because Jimmy wasn't uh, the number one option, so he wasn't given the um, the opportunity. And in this way, this team just fit better with Jimmy. Maybe the same way that Kawhi fit better with the Raptors than it did with the I think that's the an Clippers. easy call there, yeah. Yeah, and then that's the situation there. Now, um, again, is, is, is Jimmy uh, Jimmy Bucket's going to be a, a, per, a perennial playoff warrior going forward? Like, or was it a... There's a track record of that, is what I'm saying. 
Well, I mean, I guess, like I said, I, I mean, Jimmy's definitely gone there. Do I, do I think guys will um, overstep him in, in a couple of years? Probably. But right now, I would agree with that. But getting back know. to that, in the East, we went through all the teams. The only guys that yeah. we would say we would take over him, like, for sure, probably. Mm -hmm. And even well, Durant, yeah. But he also just tore his Achilles. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Tatum is a guy that's pretty much on a similar level. Maybe a better shot maker, but, you know, Jimmy's a better defender and he's hit bigger shots. Nobody else in this conference. Nobody on Philly. Yeah. Well, again, I still... I Giannis still, has his playoff falters because he still can't shoot the, the three. Yeah. And, I, and I, I mean, I, overall, I would still take Giannis over Jimmy based on the fact that he's, I think he's a better player. But in the playoffs, based off they the success... Them, they embarrassed them in the series. They swept them off the four. Well, the this, four won or whatever. Again, they, they, you know, yeah, I, mean, I think it's been shown that, that Giannis can be guarded in a particular type of way that takes away his game. So, again, until he, uh, he succeeds in the playoffs, maybe he'll join. Uh, if there's talks, he wants to go to Miami. He, he won't, I don't think think Let's go to Atlanta and talk about Bogdanovich for five minutes. So Atlanta oh got a lot better. They have a lot of bodies. They pick up Gallinari, mm -hmm. which was kind of a head scratcher. Rajon Rondo. Had expensive. Bogdanovich. Expensive. Rajon Rondo. Bogdan Bogdanovich got paid. And Chris Dunn to go along with Trey. That's a lot of guards. And they didn't really lose anybody either. I mean, I, I, Collins is a, is a solid player. So I, I, I thought I had picked Atlanta to be better, a lot better than they were last and year. Capella, they, they who they're still, gonna have, right? And Capella. They still stunk pretty badly last year. Um, they're terrible. I mean, Collins, Worst defending. Collins ended up having that uh, suspension. In, oh, yes, for the PDs. PDs. So yeah. that, that was a bit up. That cost them a lot. I thought that they were going to be um, a playoff, playoff bound team, team, bubble yeah. team. They were absolutely awful. Um, I like the signings. Um, the Bogdanovich thing going on down in the summer, that was one of the weirdest things I think I've ever seen in NBA history. Um, being traded was before a, free agency. Being, being, being traded restricted. in a signing trade, being a, restri uh, a restricted free agent. The, the, there, was no, uh, the, there was no time for people to actually be speaking to free agents, so I don't know how the Bucks thought they were going to pull a fast one there. There were, and that still might end up being a problem because they, they might face some tampering charges, which could cost them draft picks or, or whatever it might be. Uh, I think a rival executive actually was was one of the guys that really did bring it up that like what the, what the hell is this because it didn't make any sense. I'm like crazy starts on Friday. These guys are pulling moves on Tuesday. There's no there's been no signing period. What the what the hell's going on? Because they, usually they have that. I don't, yeah. I don't think they had this this year where you because they didn't know what free agency was going to be. So the, so how the heck are you signing guys to sign in trades when when you you can't be speaking to them? Which and then Bogdanovich absolutely pulls the heel move. Yeah, he absolutely turns the heel, heel, turns the heel move. Tells them to go to go screw themselves. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. And he signed to that ladder. And, and, and the crazy thing is, and again, I don't know how much the money was going to be in Milwaukee because I don't know if they it was the same deal pretty much. Huh? But but how do you turn down going to uh, the first place team on the back same back years, yeah. back to back years, um, with the MVP to go to a team that was that was near the basement? Like either he like had no thoughts of living in Milwaukee or hated the idea of living in Milwaukee and were preferred Atlanta. But that was one of the all-time heel moves. And, and shout out to him because, the, you know, the Bucks played a dangerous game and got significantly burned. But it was definitely a stone. A it stone was a cold zero, zero F's given. It was, it was like, a, I, I've never seen that kind of situation. Four and, years, 72 and, million. And a, lot of, and a lot of people were saying, you know, with that lineup, they, they did, they were to, you know, he can shoot. Yeah, good ball handler. Good ball handler. And, yeah. and you, you couple him with Drew Holly, it would have literally made... Um, Middleton, a, 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 a still would have been a third option, probably two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, third option. but uh, but it would have made it would have given him a heck of a starting lineup, probably the best starting lineup in the conference, in my opinion. Uh, all one through five, uh, yeah, arguably you could have. That still leaves them in a big a bit of a hole. But shout out to him for for doing the screw job. I don't know what the hell was going on, but um, he said he wasn't going to go. His agent was all over the map. I, that just was a mess. And I do hope that the Bucks get nailed for tampering because that that's, that looked like a whole heck of a lot of BS, in my opinion. Um, I do hope that it, whatever it's up, it's a first round draft pick or some some money. Now that was a, that was a disaster zone. I, I know Atlanta, 2020 is weird, but not, that, that's not that kind of weird. That was crazy. That was crazy. You think Absolutely. Atlanta makes the playoffs this year? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because at the end of the day, Orlando Orlando didn't get a lot. Orlando got worse. Um, they ended up losing uh, Augustine, I guess it was. I don't know. That's good. Down, but, but again, they didn't get any better. They were a bubble. Isaac's probably going to miss more time again. Yeah, he got injured there's, again. There's yeah. that eight. That eighth is the right there for the picking. I think obviously the Nets will be will, will be better. I think the Nets finish with seventh. Yeah, they'll be much better. Bulls have a chance, maybe right? But that would <gasps> do these they? playoff teams. Hold on, do they go really? Through, go through these playoff teams really quick. Milwaukee, Toronto, Boston, Miami, Locks. Philly, Lock. Brooklyn, Lock. Lock. Right. The only team really is Indiana and the Magic. 
I still think Indiana makes it. I think mean, they are yeah, bombarded. They should. They unless that, do, right? unless that Oladipo thing turns into some kind of catastrophe. But he's in a contract year yeah. too, so he, he's going to go yeah. hard. Uh, right? I think they have enough talent. I mean, they um, they still got you know, T.J. Warren was playing out of his mind he in the bubble. He was in the bubble. Oh my yeah, God. He, was, uh, he was again. They have a lot of talent there. They're not going to go. I think I thought them firing Nate McMillan was an absolute was really shady, right? Considering that what he was able to do with his star player off for the majority of the year, that's absolutely unbelievable. Um, that made absolutely no sense whatsoever. But going back to it, yeah, the eighth, Sabonis eighth, too. Eighth, uh, the eighth seed, yeah, Sabonis was lost. There's no way they were even able to do much with Sabonis out. Um, and and Oladipo wasn't healthy. Uh, yeah, eighth, uh, I don't think Orlando makes the playoffs. I, I don't, there's no that's the only signs. spot then probably, right? Yeah, Unless and there's, there's, uh, there's other teams in the, e- in the East that might, might be a bit of Chicago, a Chicago maybe makes Chicago. a chance. That's really it. Charlotte's going nowhere. New York's going nowhere. You know, you know, Washington. No, 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 believe, uh, no belief in uh, Thibodeau up in New York. In the first year, I don't know. In the first, first year, year that David, that well, you never know. Maybe, maybe you Obi Topa turns into into Vince Carter all of a sudden. Who the heck knows? I don't know. Um, I doubt it. But I think that's the only scenario. <laughs> not in year one, anyways. <laughs> um, overall, like I think that's pretty much. It'll be it'll be a battle between you know. I think Brooklyn probably has the advantage at this point. They, they you know, depending on how good that, that situation goes. You know, can and Levert. Can he play with those guys? Yeah. I thought, you know, six man, he gets six the man, point. whatever. Yeah. The, I think they have, they have the, probably the most talent uh, when everyone, you know, with those two. I mean, with, if they're healthy, but uh, like I said, Durant's coming off an Achilles injury. Let's well, see again, he's, like, he's, he's probably the number, like, I mean, Giannis was the MVP, but if Durant's like in the conference or even been playing, you'd probably argue that Durant will probably be right there, depending on what he was doing. So, yeah, just like I said, Durant is Durant, like maybe a top 10 all time player. You gotta, yeah. like maybe, but uh, uh, I just I times. just think, like I said, the Achilles injury. I'm really interested to see. We know he's not going to be the same guy. He's he's probably 31, 32 at this yeah. point, and towards Achilles. What well, and it, the shooting's going to be. So I mean, I thought a lot. I think a lot of people. About had, one minute. I think a lot of people had this thing where Durant was was probably on on the consistent thing would end up.